and welcome to the GTN show. This week you have just me as Mark is taking a well earned break after the men's Ironman World Championships and James is currently travelling back from Challenge Samarkand where he was racing. We'll have more on that along with a lot of pro racing from the weekend. We've also got world records, yep plural. We have a disqualification in an Ironman event. We've also got a pro saving the day for an age grouper at the start of their event. And in case you missed it last week, we still have a giveaway, a pretty epic one, for a Wahoo Kicker Move. We're going to kick things off with stuff that we have spotted in the world of swim, bike and run. And I specifically break them down because to kick us off, it is some world records from the running world. And I know there's often a lot. We purposely don't cover them all because we are triathlon related. However, these particular world records are just rather impressive. And this first one is a new 5K world record on track at the Diamond League meet by Gudaf Segei. She broke the world record for 5k by five seconds or just under five seconds i mean that is absolutely insane she clocked a time of 14.0021 the original record was faith kip Yegons from last year with a 1405.20 so very close to five seconds and also incredibly close to going under 14 minutes and that is a huge thing so just incredible running um on the weekend we've also had a women's only road race there's quite a few different world records and i know we've just been talking about track but then as women's only road races there's also mixed road race when the women race in with the men and this one is a women's specific road race world record yeah it's actually two in one race yeah pretty impressive so this one has come from agnes jebet who managed to clock a new world record in the 10K, but in doing so, she actually got a world record for women's only race through the 5K within that race, which is just insane. So she ran a 14.25 at her midway split and then clocked the 10K in a 29.24, which is actually the second fastest time this year in a overall race as well for, for women. So two world records in one race is, yeah, pretty special, isn't it? But going from the highs of world records to some of the lows, and specifically in triathlon, there was quite a deep long post here from Marjolaine Pierre. I'm just going to read out some of the, the, the main snippets from it. So she's just finished a race and she's been disqualified. Now, she said, I saw myself dying and it is after much fears, tears and disappointment and a few hours under infusions and care that I write these few words. Yesterday, I felt like my body was failing. A sudden loss of strength in the legs, 2K from the finish line. From the start of the race, I felt drained. The, the, the distance was insurmountable and I would never see the end. She was seven minutes ahead um, in the race and then basically she just started to really struggle. She says, at the moment of failure, I walked, then managed to run. I see the finish arch, I'm so relieved. Um, never in my life would I have thought I'd be disqualified. So she, it's not in, in, particularly clear from reading her post of exactly what happened. However, it sounds like she was told she disqual was disqualified as soon as she crossed the line and sounding a little unsure as to why, but something to do with assistance or outside assistance. Now, helpfully, Laura Phillip actually asked the question that I was thinking, and I think a lot of people who read this were asking what actually happened. Um, and in response, there's someone actually else who's stepped in here. So when Laura Phillip says, can you explain what happened? Um, Oleg, Oleg Fast and Try says, disqualified because when totally exhausted and briefly not being able to run anymore close to the finish, she grabbed the arm of the guy on the bike riding in front of her. So those that ride with the winners of second place and third place. Um, she received some water outside of the aid stations and another pro briefly held her too, if I understand right. This person's opinion says it seems judges making over the top decisions. Um, beneath that, Mila Norton says she fainted 2K before the finish line. The opening female first place bike helped her 20 seconds just to get up. And then another pro triathlete helped her for 10 meters. Marjolaine started running again and still arrived first after that. 50 metres before the finish line, she was told that she was disqualified. Obviously, absolutely devastating for her um, to put yourself and your body into that state, still cross the line first, and then find out you're disqualified, um, and then obviously end up in the medical tent like it sounds like she did. And I think it's just another example of the rules maybe not being entirely clear, or maybe they are, but is there some room for compassion sometimes in some of these events when the athletes put themselves into such a deep, dark place and are still comfortably 
in the lead and maybe is it a matter of actually being safe for the athlete to, to help them? I don't know. I mean, this all came up in discussion a long time ago when Alistair Brownlee and Johnny Brownlee helped each other over the finish line and it was due to the exhaustion. And that was a wonderful moment that was really celebrated in triathlon. But since that, the rules have changed a little bit that one the athletes cannot help each other. But when another pro sees a pro struggling or an age grouper, it's kind of human nature to help. Um, so I'd love to know what your thoughts are on that. Obviously, sympathies to Marjolaine, but do you think that the rules are the rules and that, that she should know that? Or do you think that actually there should be some amount of compassion and where does assistance cross the line of actually helping someone or just being a safety aspect and making sure that they get to the medical aid that they need? Um, Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the comments that come out as a result of that one. But uh, another athlete who didn't have a great day in Challenge Tamarkand, and I think it's sometimes quite hard for pros to talk about this and it's quite I wouldn't say refreshing because obviously we want to see them doing well and we think we look up to the pros but sometimes it's nice to know that they are human too and they really struggle and like Marjolaine saying she struggled from the start Emma Pallant at Challenge Samarkand sounded like she had a similarly tough day um, and her, she says here pictures of a good summary of my day haven't felt that bad in a very long time riding twice and running four times past the hotel every part of me wanted to pull in but um, saying the event put on a great great race just scraped second and congratulates those who um, managed it and she's heading home for some blood tests but I think we've all been there when you just cannot enjoy a race and all you can do is dream of getting to that finish line so congratulations to Emma for pushing through but um, hopefully you work out what's what was going on and um, you feel better soon I'm gonna come back to some highs in a moment but another pro who's just seen a bit of a blow quite literally is Eric Lagerstrom Um, he's put all his eggs in one basket so to speak for this year and was focusing purely on Xterra and really wanted to race at the Xterra World Championships, which are in Mulvano in Italy this weekend coming, which is very exciting. We'll have more on the results of that next week. However, obviously riding mountain bikes comes with a certain amount of risk if you're pushing it. And last week he apparently collided with some lava rock. Um, He does recommend trying to avoid lava rock. But um, uh, a few days ago, he put up a post about his injury and hoping he's going to recover. He's now um, put up this next post that basically saying, um, unfortunately, this is not Italy. After a week of icing, resting, massage and staying optimistic, my knee has made little to no improvement post-crash and I had to cancel. Um, so he's obviously a bit gutted, um, but looking for a race postseason once he's recovered. So, um, yeah, good luck with your recovery on that one. Uh, now for the rather feel-good story, which came to us, was sent to us um, from uh, Matthias Gribec from Poland. And um, it was at the Ironman World Champs in Nice for the men's and um, yeah he's basically put this story saying hi guys I have a story about Jan that might interest you so obviously our ears perked up basically Jan Fredino saved my race during the Ironman World Champs in Nice long story short I left my swimming goggles in my bag and gave the bag to my wife you can tell where this is going can't you after five minutes I realized that I don't have them and she went in another direction I went to the speaker and he shouted out on the microphone if somebody has a spare pair Apparently after five seconds, one guy from Jan's crew showed up, gave me Jan's pair of the Magic 5 goggles and said that Jan wishes you a good race. And he says, just wow, simply the goat. Um, And he's actually shared his story about it as well. So that's such a lovely story. Um, And I imagine Jan had several spare pairs ahead of his race. So um, it sounds like they had very similar face shaped because obviously Magic 5 are scanned for your face. So um, that's a really cool story. And it's nice when people can help each other out. Moving on to ultra running that leads into triathlon. Hear me out on this one. Um, Obviously, we talked about UTMB, the Ultra Trail Mont Blanc, which is kind of the unofficial world championships of ultra racing. And I've just been enjoying lots of the posts afterwards and just seeing people's race reports. And there's one athlete in particular, Lucy Bartholomew, who I followed in the past and followed again when I heard that she was in the top 10. I was just wanted to check in how she was doing. And it turns out that she was delighted with her top 10 finish, which is incredible. But she's now just put this post saying, it's been a few weeks of reflecting, resettling and recovering, and I still can't articulate how it unfolded. Um, She goes on to talk about a DNF she had in the Western States last year. And then after that, she said basically had a bit of time to to think about things and to take herself out of the cycle of, of ultra running and maybe not being in a good place, she decided to tick a bucket list and went to do an Ironman triathlon. That 
was last year um, and then last December at Ironman Oceana um, and basically she says she had so much fun um, doing the swim, bike and run and the next day she accepted her spot to go to Ironman World Champs in Kona which is really awesome. I think we might have mentioned it at the time, but I'm super excited to to see how she gets on. And also, I've actually reached out to her and she is going happy to have a chat with us in Kona. So we're hopefully going to make a bit of a video around um, basically going from UTMB into racing in Kona. And if you guys have any questions or you already follow Lucy Bartholomew, um, she's a really interesting character, I'd suggest you do. But we'd love to know what you might like to hear from her, from her racing experiences um, and going from ultra running into triathlon. Um, so please share those in the comments section below and I'll pass them on. And finally, this one from Lewis Pugh. Now you might have noticed or remembered on the show Quite a few weeks ago, we talked about Lewis Pugh attempting to swim the whole length of the Hudson River. So the river that heads up basically in New York and heads into the Atlantic. It's 315 miles long and he has just completed it in just over a month. Um, an incredible feat in itself and probably a world record, but that is not the point. He was doing it to raise awareness of looking after our rivers and talks about how obviously if our rivers are clean, they're running into the sea and it's going to be helping our oceans. And he's, this post when he completed is just really nice. He says, um, 315 miles from source to sea. People have fought for 50 years to get this river clean. And today she is beautiful. I will never forget the wildlife, the bold eagles, the vultures, the beavers and black bears. So this is my message. The Hudson is emblematic of all rivers in the world. If the people of New York can do this, then your river can also be saved. But it takes constant vigilance. Rivers are the arteries of our planet. Everything that we hold dear relies on their protection. And I mean, that is going to one extreme to really raise awareness. So congratulations to Lewis and keep up your amazing work. Diving straight in now to what the tech and if you watch athletics at all you will know of Alison Felix I think the most decorated female Olympian of all times well she has retired and has now put her energy into several things including working along with her brother on a shoe design and a shoe company known as Seishi I think or Seish I'm not quite sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly anyway she has just released a new shoe the Felix Runner now this apparently um, in her words says aim to achieve the perfect balance of cushion and comfort with responsiveness and spring and it has a neutral midfoot with a one-piece molded heel for stability and and obviously, Alison Felix was a sprinter um, and at a very high level. But she says here, the Felix runner is built to my standards as an Olympian, but not made for only Olympians. It really excites me to have a shoe that is just for women. And apparently this is a shoe that is so comfortable you can just use it for everyday shoe and your running shoe. So it's very cool to see her doing something women specific, which we're seeing more and more of. And something else which I hadn't didn't know about the brand from doing a little bit of reading after hearing about that shoe is actually they have a very cool maternity po returns policy. So if uh, one of their customers becomes pregnant and she says here, or the, the team say that often the foot size feet can swell and you might go up half a size, that they offer a complimentary pair of shoes in whatever the new size is, so normally half size up to um, any customers who become pregnant. So yeah, really cool, just supporting women in many ways and obviously making more, um, more pieces of kit that are tailored to women, which is really cool to see. Uh, moving on to Wahoo. Now, last week, James talked extensively about the new Wahoo Kicker move. So I'm not going to go into detail again. If you haven't seen it, then you can go back and check last week's show. However, I have some exciting news because the competition is still live. It is open until Saturday, the 23rd of September at 10 a.m. So you have until then to enter. The link is included in the description below and you've got a very simple question I think you have to answer um, and we have one yeah, kicker up for grabs so a pretty awesome prize if you haven't yet gone and entered I would suggest you do that now. Well, I'm going to start the race news off for you. I just finished my race, but you don't really don't care about that. But we're here at Challenge Samarkand in Uzbekistan, and the winners, well, in third place, Philip Azevedo, in second place, Aaron Royal, and the winner on the men's side, Frederick Fong. And on the women's side, in third place, Margie Satsumaria, in second place, Emma Pallant Brown, and the winner, Eli Soltaus. And my result doesn't matter. I finished. I finished. Back to you guys.
Well, well done, James, and thank you for that update. I look forward to hearing all the ins and outs of what sounds like quite an interesting race. Well, now on with the rest of the race news, and we might only be a week after the Men's Ironman World Championships, or that the weekend it was. There's an amazing amount of racing, and even some pros who are racing again after that. But first, we have Ironman 70.3 Knockheist in Belgium. And the women's race was won by Lucy Buckingham. Lizzie Rayner was second, just nine seconds behind her. And from the look of the run times, she ran five minutes quicker. So that was coming down to what must have been a sprint finish. Third went to Emily Murray and Diddy Didixons was fourth. Um, very close between all four of them, actually. The men, it was won by Peter Hamerick, who was one of the casualties at the Ironman World Champs as a DNF. So he pulled the plug on that race when it was just not going his way, obviously with the mindset that he knew there were more races to happen. So some pros just battle through at World Champs because it is a World Champs. However, there's still a season to go. There's still races to go and win. So great to see Peter Hemmerich back on top and obviously sorting out whatever, whatever had gone wrong at Ironman Worlds. Um, Wilhelm Hirsch was second and Harry Palmer third in that race. We had Ironman 70.3 Michigan, men's and women's pro field. Tamara Jewett was back in form um, with an impressive 115 run. I mean, she's known for her running ahead of Jackie Herring and Robin Pomeroy. The men's race uh, was won by Jackson Laundry ahead of Lionel Sanders. So great to see Lionel Sanders back racing after obviously all the debacle of the line, um, going over the line on the bike. Now that looked like another incredibly tight race. It was just 11 seconds between Jackson Laundry and Lionel Sanders. Um, Trevor Foley third and Sam Appleton, um, good to see him back in the mix, was fourth. We also had Ironman Maryland. Uh, that was won on the women's side by Alice Roberts, Melanie McQuaid second and Chloe Lane third. Now the men's race looked um, an exciting affair. Michael Weiss won it ahead of Jason Pole and then Sam Long, who is back doing full distance racing, um, put a post underneath actually of just how he'd forgotten how hard a full Ironman is and um, that he put everything together to sort of round up his season. Obviously, he's... Um, newly become a father and trying to balance a lot of racing as we've seen and then still doing an Ironman at the end of that with in his own words not the ideal prep that that he would have wanted Cody Beals um, finishing fourth in that race and then we had Ironman Italy which was a male pro race only that was won by Stan Gutzevez from Germany ahead of David McNamee um, again pretty close between those two and interesting not to see McNamee racing in Nice but choosing to do this and obviously trying to stamp his Kona pass for next year um, Henrik Gosch was third in that race. Um, then we had the 11 try Belgrade, which was won by Marija Lukina on the women's side, Ongen Stonjevic uh, on the men's side. We also had the Mediterranean Epic Triathlon, which sounds pretty cool. Um, that was won by Marta Sanchez on the women's race. And back on top of the podium two weeks in a row, it was none other than Javier Gomez. So it's exciting to see what he's building up for exactly because we haven't seen amazing form from him for a little while. In fact, he looked in great shape heading into the Ironman World Champs in Utah over a year ago and then got COVID and we haven't really seen him back in form since. So wonderful to see the Olympic silver medalist and world champion back in the mix and hopefully um, with some more races planned. Uh, we have the Triathlon Royanne, which was an all-French affair. Um, Alexia Bailey won the women's race. And amazingly, Clermont Mignon won the men's race. And this race was only six days after the Ironman World Champs, where he finished 10th. So an incredible recovery and turnaround to, um, to win that. So congratulations to Clermont and obviously making the most of that fitness that he's got. And I think... That is all the racing from last weekend. Uh, definitely doesn't feel like the end of the season just yet. And obviously, we've still got the Ironman World Champs for the women coming up and a lot more racing. And now it's time to see your wonderful photos. And we do have quite a light-hearted topic that we're on this month, your post-race smiles, your feels. And we have got plenty of really lovely, smiley people. So thank you for sending those pictures in. If you have one that you haven't yet shared, you can do it using the uploader, which is on screen now. And you can also find that link in the description below. And set us off, we have this one from George. Um, he says, this is in trans the Transfer Triathlon in Romania, which is cool. My first ever triathlon, finished third in my age group, started learning to swim this year in January and can say I have an excellent swimming coach. Imagine my surprise when I found myself on the podium. 
Yeah, I bet, George. That is super cool. Um, so no wonder you have a massive smile. So well done on that one. Uh, now we have Russell um, from the Oregon 70.3. He says, my wife, Courtney, completed her first 70.3 in Salem, Oregon. We competed the race stride for stride and crossed the line hand in hand. Um, she had a first taste of 70.3 distance while competing in the inaugural Western Mass as part of a relay. So much joy and emotion crossing the finish line. Wow, what a special moment. That is very cool. Um, to do that together. So well done to both of you. Martin sent this picture in. Um, oh, it's from the World Champs in Nice. From the run, saying it needed those power-ups. There was some great crowds on the run with four laps out and back. So um, I'm sure the age groupers were, well, and the pros, were really feeding off that. And it looks like Martin was. And then a lovely picture here, showing off his GTN t-shirt, pretending I'm a competitor ready to kick some behinds. Well, I'm sure you did. So well done and thanks for sharing those lovely pics. Uh, here we have Ian from Rutland and he says completion of my first middle distance well under prepared after injuries but completed it completed it in six hours 44 he used it mainly as a training exercise for Ironman, Ironman Hamburg next year now this isn't exactly a post-race smile but he's smiling just before he gets to the finish which is what we like to see he's also smiling here on the bike and he sent another photo of him smiling on the swim so I think it was ticks all the boxes for, for being happy and, and happy at the finish. So well done on that one. Uh, and a great post-race picture here from Dana Lay in Chattanooga. The finish line smile from 70.3 Chattanooga one month before I suffered, oh, a calf strain after I slipped out coming in the water of a local try. So felt happy to race and feel good. Uh, uh, personal best on the bike on a hilly course and overall race time. Oh, and got to see my my coach on the run course and at the finish line. Oh, nice um, little perks to look forward to. Awesome. I have cut it there. We've got a few more, but um, we'd love to share more of them as well because I just think it's so nice to see that emotion you get at the end of the race and it's quite motivating. I feel so anyway, and I'm sure you guys too. So keep sending in your great picks. Okay, I'm not really sure if I can do this one on my own, but say what? <laughs> um, doesn't quite work, but I tried. Um, I have picked out a few comments, mainly from last week's show, because it was heated. Um, the conversation that started by Mark and James around the split Ironman World Champs. And I know we've been there lots of times before, but it seems like it's still really hitting a nerve. And it's been really interesting to hear you, you guys and your thoughts after actually seeing the men's only race. And it's obviously split triathlon races, and it's very much split opinions. I've picked out a couple but if you're interested and you want to read the whole range go check out last week's show comments um this one from john who 5567 says yan is exactly right on this point the iron man world championships just did not feel the same this felt like just another iron man race i mean I'm, I'm intrigued reading these comments myself because i loved being a niece and i felt it had a real hype but i was there i guess as a spectator it was someone new I'm not going to go into the whole topic because the guys did it last week. Um, this one I thought was quite interesting from Lizzo Beach. And she or they say, I'm fairly new to the sport, so I have no tie to Kona. And we don't often get this perspective. Perhaps the event is awarded to whatever location can handle two days of racing and can rotate continents, uh, rotate continents to the bid winner. So I guess a bit like the Olympics. Or if it gets changed to be a recombined, then make it a true elite field or make it more elite anyway institute a baseline qualifying time um, so the race venue can be accounted for for the qualifying time start groups can then also be staggered to make sure the pro women are not impeded uh, bottom line this is a world championship not a local race so make it feel that way um, she does go on and has um, some recommendations and says I, I she also does say that she um, watched it on delay at 1.5 time speed so she could uh, fast forward through the ads I mean that's a good tip there um, but I think that's quite interesting because we do get bogged down and a lot of us have been involved in the triathlon world for a long time and that's why Kona is such an important thing so it's quite interesting to hear from someone who's more neutral on that and actually give a, a different perspective um, and then this one was just maybe slightly chuckle from Claw 7705 Is it just me or does Mark actually look like Jan's younger brother? And that was on um, our Wahoo video with Jan um, going through his Wahoo element bolt, um, which I found quite bizarre because also someone whilst we're out in Nice was convinced that Mark and I were brother and sister. Just to clarify, we're not. And 
neither of us are related to Jan either. We wish we were. Um, so yeah, thank you for all of your comments and do please keep coming, um, keep leaving them because we are always reading them and just fascinated to hear what you guys are thinking and what's important to you. But that is rounding up my solo effort on the show. Hopefully you've not got too bored of just hearing uh, one voice, but if you do want to see a very exciting video coming up, we have GTN, so myself, Mark and James going up against the men's 5K world record. Um, as you can imagine, it's very fast. We are not. We did it as a combination. Um, you'll have to check out the video to see if we made it. All I'll say is it was very close and it was ridiculously painful. So, um, yeah, look out for that video. If you want a video to watch now, though, that was a little bit more lighthearted and more endurance based. Mark and I did a sea to summit triathlon whilst we were out ahead of the Ironman World Champs, going from Nice all the way up to a mountain, which was a pretty epic and cool day out. But before you go, if you're still in the mood of the Ironman World Champs from Nice or you're getting ready for Kona and you just want to feel a bit of that vibe, we have these t-shirts in the shop. This one I'm wearing is actually the Kona one. So um, yeah, you can check it out. And we've also got the Nice ones still in the shop. So go check those out. And hopefully, if you have enjoyed the show, we'd love your support. You can do that by subscribing to the channel if you've not yet done so and hitting the like button.